So one of the biggest struggles that I personally had studying for the ACT was learning all these comma rules about clauses, independent clauses, subordination, independent, all these weird things. So this video aims to put all of that, package it into one short guide and make it as simple as possible. Copper rules are not that bad. It's just that the way they're taught, it seems like a lot of things are contradicting uh, each other and it, it gets kind of messy. So this video is pretty short. It goes over independent clauses, dependent clauses, a number of other things that you will see in a little bit. Before we get to that, just wanted to mention that we have six free practice exams linked below if you need those. We also have courses and tutoring with me on our website and be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more weekly content like this. All right, there's three different things I'm gonna do in this part of the video. First, we're gonna go over clause types, independent versus dependent and why it's important to know this. Then we're going to go over, this is actually a part of the clause discussion, conjunctions, we'll talk about this. And then we're going to go over three different sentence structure types. You need to know these because just about every sentence on the English exam will fit into one of these types of structures. And then lastly, I'll go over some more examples of what this can look like just to help you better understand it. So let's start with the clauses. Why is this important? Basically, this is a complete sentence if it has a subject and a verb, aka an independent clause. And this is an incomplete sentence. You need to be able to notice the difference between these things. So here are some examples. A very simple example, I have two of them right here. You have a subject, you have a verb, and that's a complete sentence. It is cold. Another example is my car is your subject, drives is your verb. Okay, that's a very simple and basic independent clause. So the question is, why do we have to add anything to this? Why do we have to study more in terms of sentence structure types? Well, it's because not every sentence in English is this simple. And that's where I'm going to get into the examples in a little bit. Now, what are dependent clauses? Basically, I just, you know, shortened these sentences a little bit. This one is basically just an action. This one's just a subject. So obviously that's not complete. That's not a complete idea. It cannot stand alone by itself. What about this one right here? The interesting thing here is this is dependent because it can't stand alone by itself because of even though at the beginning. This last part is actually independent. But when we throw in this even though at the beginning, AKA a subordinating conjunction, that makes the entire clause dependent because the even though the by just the logical definition of it, you need to have something after this to explain what the even though is talking about. So for example, I could say, even though it's hot outside, it's still raining, period. That's an example of how the even though works logically. Or, you know, I could say, after we went to the uh, restaurant, comma, we went to the library, okay? So I can't just say after we went to the restaurant. That's not a complete sentence. I need to have something after this, and usually it's gonna be followed by a comma, that'll add to this sentence. This is not complete by itself, okay? Now, these are just some examples right here of what the subordinating conjunctions like even though can look like. If you have, again, the point here is if you have one of these words at the beginning of a sentence and it's in this kind of structure, it's very likely that it'll be a dependent clause, this clause specifically. So you need to have something after this clause to complete the sentence, okay? That's the main message here. All right, so this part of the video is what you really need to know and that's why you're here. There are three different sentence structure types that just about every sentence will fit into. There's one where you have a dependent clause, comma, and then you follow that with an independent clause. I have an example I'll explain in a second. Another where you basically flip that, you have a dependent after, and then here you have an independent clause with an interjection. So I'm gonna mark all the independent clauses as purple, all the dependent ones as uh, orange. So in this clause, the first example of right here, where is my independent clause? It's after. And before that, I have I have a, a dependent clause. And this is just a typical sentence structure. You have an introductory statement, which is the orange part. And then you have the end of it, which is the actual sentence. This part is disposable. You don't need it, okay? But it's just, it's just there to add meaning. And a lot of the times in English sentences, you will have introductory statements. I'm use, I've probably used dozens of them in this video as I'm talking already. So this structure of purple, or sorry, orange comma purple, if you wanna remember it this way, is one sentence structure type. Okay, the color coding will help you remember this. So remember the color coding. Purple is independent, orange is dependent, and that's a sentence structure type that you need to know. So I'm just gonna kinda get rid of all these other markings so things don't get too confusing. All right, the next sentence structure type is where you have the dependent at the end, and then you have independent at the beginning and obviously a comma between these two to separate the clauses. I, I should have made this clear before, but the comma is how you separate these clauses if it's the same uh, the same sentence. It's the same exact thing. Notice how I literally just flipped the script. I literally just took this one and instead of putting it at the beginning, like I did here, I just moved it to the end and it still applies, it's perfectly fine. It's still raining, comma, even though it's hot outside. This is not standalone and it cannot stand alone by itself. This part is a complete sentence and it can stand alone by itself. Here we don't have an introductory statement, but we have a conclusive statement that's adding that extra detail. Again, the, ex the point of this is just add, is just to add extra detail. It's not actually 100% necessary. You could get rid of this and the sentence would be perfectly fine, okay? So that's how that one works. Last of the three 
is where you have a complete sentence like it is raining outside and then I throw in an interjection. You might have different teachers call this different things. You could call it a comma sandwich. Um, interjection is like the most common way, the technical way to say it. But basically, you take your sentence, which is an independent clause by itself. I should mark that as purple. Uh, and then you throw in an interjection or a, uh, like a, a dependent clause like this that is separated from the rest of the sentence, the original sentence via commas. So again, I, and, and the way that you know it's an interjection is you can take it, you can get rid of it, you can also get rid of the commas or keep one of them or get rid of them. And you can see that the sentence is perfectly fine and it makes sense as an independent clause by itself. So it is raining outside. That's perfectly fine. It's the same as the original. But what I just did is I just threw in a meaningful, logical, dependent clause or in essence, just this word adverb right here for extra detail. It is surprisingly raining outside. You can, and again, the whole point of an interjection is you can get rid of it and the sentence makes sense by itself. You can also separate it with dashes instead of commas. Um, that's something that you'll see as well. But the point is you can get rid of it and it makes sense. Okay. So that's an interjection. Just the basic structure. If I was to draw it out, it would be like purple comma comma purple. And then we have an orange in the middle. So the orange part is usually going to be dependent in the interjection. And then the rest of it, um, these two parts together, if you get rid of the dependent clause, will form an independent. Okay. That's kind of how this sentence structure works. So what you really need to remember is this right here, this right here, and this right here. These are your three sentence structure types that you need to know for the ACT English exam. Now, the last thing I want to go over is kind of how, just more examples of how this can form and how you can actually combine different sentence structure types. So the first one, this is very simple. It is raining, a very simple sentence structure. I've marked it as purple because it is independent. Okay. Now the next one, I move the, it is raining back here. This is my independent. And then here I have a dependent clause, even though it is sunny right? I have the, even though the subordinating conjunction that I talked about up here, we already mentioned these right here. So because of that, this clause right here is going to be dependent. Okay. So this is a, one of the sentence structure types. It's actually the first one that we talked about. Now we have this third one right here. We see that the beginning is the same. We have a dependent clause. Then we have our independent clause right here. And then we have this extra clause at the end, which is dependent, which surprises me that cannot stand alone by itself, unless it's a question, which it is not. So what am I doing here? Well, this part right here looks like the first form that we discussed, right? It looks like this one. The second part right here looks like the second form that we discussed. It looks like this. So what I just did is actually combine the two. And this is something that you can do in a lot of English, just sentences in general, you can actually combine different forms. So you can get a complex sentence like this. Um, and that's perfectly fine. As long as it's logical and makes sense and you make sure that this is dependent, this is dependent, and this is independent. So I should, I to mark this incorrectly. This is actually independent. Then there's no issues here. Okay. That's, that's something that's actually very common. You will find combinations being done a lot. Now, the last one is kind of on steroids. So again, just take it one clause at a time. So this is the same. We already know this is dependent. We already know this is dependent. What am I doing with this? So I noticed that I have the two comma thing here uh, within this clause. So I have the interjection actually there. That's an interjection that I discussed above. So interjections, um, that is the dependent clause. And then the rest of it, you know, the independent clauses right here, these two together, it is raining. That's the independent clause that actually is the, the standalone part of the sentence that is bringing the actual subject and verb. So that's a very complex sentence. You have an interjection, you have a dependent clause at the beginning for an introductory statement, and then you have a conclusive statement the dependent clause at the end. Uh, that's how that works. If you have any more questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I will be answering all questions about this, this video. If anything was confusing, I will clear those things up there. If you need any more help with this, if you want more video instruction on how this type of thing works, if you want problem sets, practice problems for these specific skills, I recommend you check out our website and our courses that go over each of these skills for English one by one. Uh, apart from that, that's it for me. Best of luck prepping and let me know your questions in the comments below. Bye.